Hello and welcome to this ArtCam Insignia demonstration. In this demonstration we're going to be looking at some of the basic 3D modelling tools that are in ArtCam Insignia, namely using the shape editor and I'm just going to basically break you in lightly into the world of ArtCam Insignia. Okay so what we're going to be doing is creating this egg board for Easter. Now not only can you use this for Easter, you can use this any other time of the year. It's basically got two domes in there just to put your eggs in and then there's these soldier cutouts and they may be not perfectly shaped like a, a soldier that you would cut up your toast but you can put them in there and because the head's quite big you can actually get your fingers in there and pick up the the actual toast okay so just a, an introductory sort of demonstration into artcam insignia so let me just open up artcam insignia here you can see i've just got the welcome page for insignia and the first thing that i'm going to do is create a new model and we can do that by selecting new model here so I can just enter a height for this in Y, a width in X. I can also change the origin point, so where the machine's going to start by just clicking on any of the four corners or the center. I'm going to leave it at the center. I can select the units, millimeters or inches. And here on the right, we have something called resolution. Now, this is much like a TV. The higher the resolution, the better quality the 3D is going to be produced because it's going to have more pixels in there. Now the downside to this is that the higher the resolution the more that it's going to take on your PC so the more work your PC is going to have to do. So you're going to need quite a, a, a decent computer in order to work at a high resolution. Now to be completely honest with you Anything over about one and a half thousand for most jobs is perfectly fine. You only have up to 2000 by 2000 on Insignia as a limit. So here you can see it's actually 2400 because it's longer in one direction than the other. Okay, so if this was square, let's make that 200. You can see that it's 2000 by 2000. Okay, so that's the highest resolution that you can get in this signal anyway. Okay, so that's just basically what the resolution is. The higher, the better quality that the 3D will actually be because there will be more pixels in there, much like a TV. Now, for most purposes, anywhere over about one and a half is going to be perfectly fine. So I'll select OK and that will open up a new model for me. Okay, so when you open up ArtCam, you'll be presented with a new model and here you can see it's put me into the 2D view. So I'm going to use the 2D view for a little while and then I'm going to switch on to the 3D view. And you can do that by selecting the 3D view tab here and that will place you in the 3D view. So let's switch back to the 2D view. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a guideline because I want to know where my zero is in the vertical and I can do that by just selecting on the rule on the left hand side and then just coming across and it will actually drop a guideline for me. I can then double click on that and it will basically say where do I want to position this. So I want that to be at zero and apply and I also want to lock that Okay, so that's locked now. I can't actually move that. Okay, so if I want to do anything with that, I need to double click on there and unlock it and then I can move it or I can delete it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create a circle first of all. So I'm just going to start basically creating the vectors so I can create the 3D relief. Okay, now in ArtCam, any 3D work that we create is called reliefs. So let's create a diameter, let's say 40 millimeters, and select create. I can right click to exit the tool. And what I'm going to do is just bring that down. 
Now if I press Alt on the keyboard, that will maintain an orthographic snap. Okay, so an angle snap of 90 degrees. So let's bring that down to, let's say around about there. And I'm just going to move it to the side, let's say about there. Okay, so when I'm happy with that, what I'm going to do is create a mirror of this over the other side. And I can do that by using the mirror objects tool. Let's just move that out of the way. And I'm going to make sure that I've got to copy the original objects on. And I'm just going to do this across the model. So there you can see I've got these two circles. And these are going to be what I use to actually create my domes. Okay, so let's create the vectors for the soldier now. And I'm going to do that by actually tracing around a, a bit of clip art. I'll show you how you can do that. So let's open up the bitmap layers and I'm going to right click and select import. And you can see that I've got this toy soldier JPEG here. And you can see that if I were to just open this, it's going to be too big. So I'll just do that just to show you. So if I select open, you can see that the actual image is too big for the model. So what I need to do, let's just delete that. And let's just import that again. And I select that. And now where it says scaling, you can see that I've got none selected. What I need to do is select fit and that will fit in the model. So you can see that this guy fits within the model now. Okay, now I want to basically turn this into lines. I want to create a, a, an outline for this. Let me just delete this guideline because it's getting in the way. And what I want to do is to just trace around this really, really quickly. Okay, so the way that I can do that is use the bitmap to vector tool. Now this basically tells ArtCam what colour to actually trace around. Now if I were to select the primary colour, which is this black colour now, create vectors, let's just click here, this basically toggles the relief preview or I can just bring the transparency down. You can see that it's just basically traced around the black areas, which was what I selected here. So I don't really want that, so let's undo that. And what I need to do is reduce the colours because I've got lots and lots of colours in this colour palette. Okay, so ArtCam needs to trace around one colour. So let's bring this down. I'll bring it right the way down to two colours. Now if I bring that down to two colours, you can see that I've lost the outline for the face. So let's bring it back up to three colours and you can see that I get that back and I also get the hands back. So I'll select OK now and because I want to create the outline for this I want these colours linked together. Okay, so the way that I can do that is if I select the darker colour, left click that and then make sure that the second colour is the paler colour so I'll right click that and then I click this button just above the two colours that actually links the two colours together. So it will it will basically make the lighter colour the same as the darker colour. Okay, so that links that together. Now I'll show you later that you can unlink this if you want to later on. Okay, so when you're happy with that, what you can do is create the vectors. Okay, and it gives us some really nice vectors. It's not following the pixelation, as you can see. It's giving me some really nice vectors. Now, if I don't actually want to see this image, as you can see, it's getting in the way now at the moment. So I don't really want that. I can just switch back to the original bitmap player. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just delete all of this on the inside. So just select that. Just press delete on the keyboard. Now what I'm going to do is make this guy a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is just draw a box around there, making sure that I don't select the two circles because they're the right size. And then I can go to transform. And then let's maintain the aspect ratio. So I'll just turn that lock on. 
Now, if I do that there, you can see that it's keeping the top left as the anchor point. If I press Alt on the keyboard, it will use the center. Okay. So let's make this guy a little bit smaller. Let's say to about there. And let's center him. Okay, so now you can see that he's got a really, really small neck. And if you were to cut up some toast, it probably wouldn't fit in between there. So what I need to do is just measure this distance here by the shoulders. I'm also going to delete these eyes because I'm going to sort that out later. So let's just measure the distance, let's say from here to here. And you can see on the far right hand side that the distance is 13 and a half millimeters. So let's say that that's okay, that 13 and a half. So what I'm going to do is basically join this head up to here and get rid of all this on the inside. So what I need to do is something called node editing. And this basically gives me all of the points that are on this vector. So if I go into node editing, which is here, I can press N on the keyboard and that will take me in there as a shortcut. And what I can do is let's select anywhere. I can right click and select cut vector. Let's right click, let's say there, let's cut the vector. Let's select this one. Now I can actually hover over this and press C wherever I want to cut it. Okay, so when I've done that, I can select these vectors. You can see that they're not grouped together. So I can just delete that now, like so. And then to join that up, let's just select the polyline tool. And then I'm going to draw smooth polylines and I'm going to add this to the existing line. So this saves me having to join it up afterwards. So let's bring that in there. Let's say like so. Okay, so that's joined that up. Now I also need to do the same here with the leg. I need to cut this section out here. So let's go into node editing again and I'm going to cut there and let's cut there and then let's select that section on the inside like so and then to join these up really quickly you can just select here to close the vector with a line and it will just join those up okay so there you can see my little soldier okay so I'm just going to move him up I'm just doing that with the arrow keys on the keyboard and what I'm going to do now is switch to the 3D view. Okay, so there you can see I've got all of my vectors there. I can use a plan view if I want to just use this as a 2D view. Now, let's just rotate that around. Okay, so what we're going to do now is start creating some reliefs or 3D work. Now, I'm not going to really get into the nitty gritty of this. I'm not going to use some of the more advanced tools like the extrusion tools. I'm just going to use the shape editor, which is basically the go-to tool in ArtCam to create relief work. Now, this has been around forever. This has been around since ArtCam version one. In fact, version one was just the shape editor. Okay, so it's had a lot of use over the years. Okay, so one thing that we actually done with this in the last couple of years was to make it live. So you can actually have a real time feel of what you're actually doing. So you can actually see it and it makes it a lot more intuitive when you're actually using it. So I can explain this a lot better now because you can actually see what I'm producing rather than having to wait for me to select it. So there are a few ways to open up the shape editor. One way obviously is to select the icon up here or you can press F12 on the keyboard or you can just double click the actual vector. Now when you do that, it displays all of the nodes. Now I'll tell you why it does that in a moment, but if you take a look on the far right hand side, you can see all of the options that are available. So if I want to create just a flat plane, let's say, or a flat shape, what I need to do is just select where it says start height. So if I give it a height, let's say 10 millimeters, 
let's just turn off the vector you can see that I can basically make this a flat that's 10 millimeters high okay and it all works in real time so 25 2 okay so let's go back to zero if I want to create a bevel you can see that it creates this bevel now here you can see a slider bar so that's actually for the angle and this all works in real time so I can bring that down and it will show me what it's actually going to look like in real time okay now if I want to I could add a start height onto that as well so I have a flat and then I have the angle and I can also limit this to a height so let's say that I want this to be limited to a height of two millimeters so it just gives me this chamfer around the edge and I can also change the actual angle of that let's say that I want it quite tight like so and I want the start height to be smaller okay so we can change it like that so let's set these back now and I'll also show you round so you can do exactly the same thing with the dome okay so that's what we're going to be doing with the the eggs okay so this is just the shape editor there are some other tools to create 3d namely the two rail sweep which is a really really useful tool but i'm not going to get into that today as this is just a basic demonstration okay so what i'm going to do for this guy is to create a square and let's give it a limit to height let's say two millimeters like that and let's add a start height let's say two and let's bring this angle down let's say to a more normal sort of figure let's say 55. now if i turn on the nodes and just zoom in what you can actually do with this is actually manipulate the 3D relief whilst you have the nodes on. So if I wanted to maybe make this neck just a little bit larger, what I can do is just grab that node, and just bring that out. I can also do the same there. So I can actually manipulate this in real time. Okay, so any areas, let's say that I wanted to create a node there, let's say insert a node there and I can actually bring that in if I wanted to like so and I can just change whatever I want okay so it all works in real time now the most important thing with this is that you make sure that you select apply when you've finished if you just select cancel or close this it won't actually create anything so you need to select apply and then you can either press cancel or close the dialog box okay so if I turn off the vectors you can see that I've got this little guy here okay now you can see that I've only got one of these so what I'm going to do is just show you how you can create multiple copies of this so if I open up the relief clip art library you can see that I'm just in this temp folder that I've created you can see that I've got a few of these soldiers let's just delete these guys like so and what I'm going to do is just grab this relief now Artcam Insignia doesn't have relief layers so if I grab the relief drop that in the relief clip art library which is here now that's actually been freed up from the model now so that's just saved in the relief clip art library and that's going to be there forever until I delete it and now I don't really need this where I've got on the screen so what I can actually do is reset that relief so I've just got rid of that relief okay because if I just click on that it brings it back but it brings it back as a piece of floating clip art so I can move this around and I can move that wherever I like okay so if I take a plan view of that and let me just make sure that I've got this in the position that I want let's say around about 
there let's say I can delete this old vector let's just turn off the relief clip art library so make sure that I've got that selected and what I can do is just basically use this as I would a vector so if I wanted to mirror this I can do that if I wanted to create copies of this I could do that along a curve I could do that using the keyboard I could do block copy rotate if I wanted to do using the keyboard I could maybe create a, a pattern let's say for instance so if I transform that set the origin to be at the bottom I can copy that just press control down on the keyboard like so I can create basically a freeform copy of that if I wanted to I could move that there could create more copies here okay so I can create multiple multiple copies so let me just delete those. But the way that I'm going to do this is using the block copy rotate. So if I select the block copy rotate and I'm going to do a block copy, which is basically an array, and I'm going to specify the gaps for the distance. So I'm going to do this 10 millimeters for the X gap. And I'm going to do five columns and just one row so it's just going to basically create five copies 10 millimeters apart so if I select that and select apply let's center that in the model move that upwards like so and you can see that I've got my five soldiers so in order to paste them down what I need to do is select all of those and then just press enter on the keyboard and they will be pasted down and you can see that I've got five copies of those now to create the two domes that's really really easy exactly the same thing let's use the two circles I'll double click on those and let's use a round and I'm just going to basically move that up or down I'm just going to leave it at the default value to be honest which is 45 and then select apply and then I can close that and let's delete those vectors so there you can see that I've got all of my relief work drawn now I do have a little problem with this in that if I rotate around everything's positive okay now I want it to be negative now if you do happen to do that or basically you want to create a mold or something and you just want to flip them around it's really really easy to do within ArtCam what you can do is use the invert relief in Z so if I select that it basically just inverts around so it creates a female rather than a male now if I just zoom in a little bit you can see that these edges are a little bit rough so you can see that they're a little bit jaggedy and also I don't really want a sharp edge on these domes here either maybe somebody might hurt the little fingers for instance so what I'm going to do is smooth all of this out so if I go to smooth relief now you can do this locally as well because we've got a sculpting tool a smooth sculpting tool within ArtCam. I'll just show you that first of all. So what you can do is just do basically do this locally. So you can actually just go around and smooth any areas like so. Now I'm not really too happy with that because I want to do the whole thing. So if I just select revert and it will go back to the beginning or I could just undo it. Okay so let's use the overall smooth relief and I'm going to do this let's say 10 passes so it's going to do this 10 times over the whole relief and then select apply so you can see that that's basically just done what I showed you with the smoothing tool but it's done it over the whole of the relief and smoothed it all out now one thing that I've not done is create the face on the actual soldiers so what I'm going to do is go back to the 2d view let's go back to the toy soldier and what I'm going to do is right click on the color palette and I'm going to reset all links okay and you can see that I've now got this guy's face 
So what I can do now is do a bitmap to vector again using the darker colour for the eyes and the mouth and create vectors. So let's sh press shift on the keyboard and I can deselect these vectors and then I can delete whatever's left. So if I go back to the original bitmap layer, you can see that I've just got this face. So let's go to the 3D view so I can see where this is. And let's transform this. Let's make it a bit smaller. Now you can see that the origin is at the bottom there. So if you want to move that back to the center, just select here to move the origin back to the center. And then you can just press Alt on the keyboard. Let's move that to there, let's say. Let's move this up. Just make sure that it's in the right area on the face, let's say there. And then what I need to do is just copy this. So what I can do is transform and then press Control and Alt on the keyboard and it will maintain the snap and it will also create a copy for me. So I'll just do that there and there. Also there. And then let's put one there. Okay, I've got these five faces. Let's just double click on these. I'm just going to do a basic shape with these. Let's do a round, just add it and select apply. Okay, so there you can see the eyes and the mouth. Now to actually machine this, I don't really want to machine the whole of the piece because it's not really going to do anything, it's just going to machine the top of this. It's just going to be a bit of a waste of time. So what I really need to do is get a boundary for this. And the way that I can do that is really easy. I can select to create a boundary from the relief. So if I select that and just select to create boundary and it will create this boundary around the relief. Now you can see that it's bled a little bit outwards. That's because of the smoothing. Okay, so if I hadn't have smoothed this, it would have basically have gone right to the edge of each of these reliefs. Okay, so that's going to act as my boundary when I machine this. Also, let's take a plan view. I also want to create an outside rectangle. So let's just snap on the edges. And I'm just going to select this corner here and just bring that in just to create a a radius on the edges there like so and those are all my vectors for machining so to machine this if I go to toolpaths I'm going to do what we call a machine relief toolpath so this is basically a 3d toolpath so if I select on there and it says the area to machine now I just want to machine this area here because I don't want to basically take any material off the top. I would have already have done that, just roughing this out, just basically playing in the top of that off. Okay, so let's do selected vectors and finishing options. Let's choose, let's say a three millimeter ball nose tool. Now you can change the strategy of this. So it can be either a raster, which will go across in X, step over in Y, back across in X. Now that's not really too efficient for machining something like this. So what I'm going to do is change this to an offset strategy. Now, if you want to change the step down or any of the speeds and feeds, you can do that by just selecting the drop down for the tool and you can just select that here. Now I'm just going to leave those as the default value for this. Roughing options, let's choose, let's say a 12 millimeter end mill. Now let's check the step down on this. You can see that the step down is 3.5 millimeters. I don't actually think that we're actually that deep. So if I hover over that, you can take a look down the bottom right hand side. You can see that the Z value is actually minus three millimeters. So if I were to leave this at 3.5, it would basically give me an error message saying that to check the tool parameters and it would basically mean that the step down was too large so we couldn't actually machine anything. So let's change that to two millimeters. 
let's go down to the bottom and I'm just going to define the material. Let's say that the material's let's say 20 millimeters thick. And that will create this material block that's in this transparent blue color. And when I'm happy with that, I can either give it a name or just select calculate now and it will automatically name it as a machine relief. So there you can see the roughing tool. So that's 12 millimeter. And then it's finally doing the finishing tool. Now I'll simulate all of this in a moment so you can see what's actually happening. If I want to turn off any of these tool paths, just select the light bulb here and it would turn them on or off. Now that's actually a group. So if I wanted to just see the roughing, I could just turn off the finishing. Okay, so that's controlled by these light bulbs. So to cut the part out, let's just select the outside vector here. And I'm going to do a, a profile toolpath. Automatically, it will go to the finished depth. Select the profiling tool. Let's just use the 12 millimeter. I'm not worried about the step down on this one. And calculate now. Now, if I want to simulate this, I can right click and simulate all toolpaths. And that will give me a simulation. Now, if I actually want to see what the tool is actually doing, what I can do is select the machine relief, select the simulation control bar, and then I can actually play this. Okay, so it would actually show me what that tool has done. Now it's going on to the smaller tool. I can play that. I can zoom in and take a look what it's actually doing. If I want to, I can fast forward that. Carry on playing, fast forward. Okay, so if you want to actually see the tool, that's how you do it. Okay, so let's just delete that. Now, if I want to actually post this to my CNC machine or send it to my CNC machine, I can do that by selecting tool paths and then select to save tool paths. Here you can see that I've got three tool paths. So let's send all those to the left hand side. If I had a tool changer, all that I'd need to do is make sure that each of these tool numbers was correct and corresponding with what's in the carousel. And then just put that on the right hand side and then I could just do exactly the same as what I'm about to show you. If I've got a single headed machine, what I need to do is do each one separately. But what I can do is do all of them at the same time. So I can just grab those, put them back over there and I can save the toolpaths to separate files. I can also append the toolpath details to file names. So it basically puts all of this detail on the file name so I know what it actually is. Now, by default, this is actually on the add home move to at the end of the file. So it goes back home, the machine does, to its zero, zero position. So let's save this, let's say onto my desktop. Let's find where I've got my files. Let's say, I'll call this egg one and then select open. And it's going to save into that folder. Now the machine file format is basically what you use to convert the information from ArtCam into information that your machine will understand. Now a lot of these machines are either standard G-code or they use their own specific post. So I strongly recommend if you haven't already got ArtCam Insignia to download the demonstration version you can go through the tutorials and then at the end you can actually post those or convert them so you can use them on your machine and then you can actually see whether it works prior to purchasing. Okay, so let's say for instance I just wanted to use a, a general G code. Let's not use inches, let's use millimeters and then select save. And then if I go to the folder you can see that I've got these three files here. So if I go to the last file, which is the profile at the end, open that up. It's basically just a series of commands and coordinates, just basically telling the machine or the CNC machine where to actually go and how to cut the part. Okay, that brings it into the demonstration. 
I hope that you found it useful and many thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.